PID is generally caused by a contiguous spread of organisms ascending from the cervix via the endometrial cavity to the fallopian tubes and beyond. Indeed, many studies have demonstrated such a continuum by isolation of the organisms at different levels of the genital tract and by histopathologic evidence of infection of the cervix, endometrium, and salpinx. Such a canalicular spread of organisms seems the most common mechanism for the development of PID and has been documented for Neisseria gonorrhea and Chlamydia trachomatis. However, salpingitis has been reported in women who have been sterilized. Parametrial infection through lymphatic drainage has been documented, particularly for Mycoplasma hominis. Depending on the time of the menstrual cycle, uterine contractions can facilitate the ascension of the organisms. It can be hypothesized that the endometrial cavity is contaminated with cervical vaginal organisms during the proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle because uterine contractile movements are retrograde at that time, facilitating the ascension of microbes into the upper genital tract. Some contamination of the tubes may also occur. If there is a sufficient number of organisms, immediate symptoms of PID will appear. However, during the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle, the contractions change direction and become antegrade, most likely protecting the tubes from further contamination. At the time of menses, contractions reach maximum intensity, causing a retrograde flow of menstrual blood into the fallopian tubes. Such a massive influx of contaminated endometrial material precipitates PID. Indeed, studies have shown that women more often present with symptomatic PID during or immediately after menstruation. Once the tubes are infected, the tubal inflammatory process extends from the mucosa into the subepithelial tissue and then beyond to the sera. Marked inflammatory cell debris can be present in the lumen and there is edema of the stroma. The tubes are swollen, the sera is red, as well as the mucosa when seen through the fimbria, an exudate can be seen. At this time, the tubes can still be freely movable. Later, the tubes are covered with fibrin deposits and adhere to the proximal structures such as the ovaries and broad ligament. In severe pelvic peritonitis, pelvic components adhere to one another and the tubes are no longer freely movable. A tubal ovarian abscess may develop. The infection can spread into the abdominal cavity to reach the surface of the liver and cause perihepatitis or Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome. Tubal damage and adhesions resulting from fighting the infection can cause lumen obstruction and fimbriate coagulation, which in turn can lead to ectopic pregnancy, infertility, and chronic pelvic pain. Oral contraceptives prevent ovulation, suppress the proliferation of the endometrium, decrease uterine contractions, and thicken the cervical mucus to create a mucus plug. Progesterone has similar effects. These mechanisms could lead to a decrease of symptomatic PID.